I just drove 200 kilometers to build my dream Minecraft house in real life. Over the next 125 hours, I'm gonna be primitive building a luxury mansion. However, it was gonna be dark in just a few hours, so I needed to make sure we had some shelter to protect us from the nighttime. These are the tools that we had, and there were only three of us, so we started by cutting down some trees with an axe, which we quickly learned was gonna create some problems. We needed to use the wood and try and build some walls of the house, and the goal was to make it look like an actual house from Minecraft. When I was young, I used to love playing this game. It gave people the promise to build anything you can imagine, but I always wondered how hard building something in the game would be in real life. So typically, you'd start off by finding the perfect place to build, which we found a nice little clearing by the stream that overlooked the mountains. The next step would be to gather materials, and this is the part that's not so easy in real life. We spent hours together during the first day cutting down and processing the trees by removing the branches and cutting them to specific sizes that we would need to build the house. The the plan was to make the house quite big, where we could all comfortably sleep inside, but also have room to walk around inside and have the ceiling way taller than our heads. And finally, once you have the materials, you can simply build the home that you want. And you'll need that shelter to actually protect you from dangers. In the game, that looks like zombies and creepers and all sorts of other monsters, however in real life, there are two things we needed to be careful of. One is the weather. If we were unlucky, it could change on us quickly, with rain, thunder, strong winds, or even forest fires were a possibility. Possibility. However, even though monsters aren't real, there were still other things we needed to be careful of, such as bears and other wildlife, which you'll see is actually very common. To build the house, we settled on the idea of first digging some holes and planting eight posts into the ground, which would be the support beams, and we would fill in with smaller logs to build up the walls. However, as nightfall came, we realized we were way in over our heads. With only a couple posts made and a huge mess of logs and cut down trees, I decided to set up a tent for the night just a little ways into the woods. Okay, it's getting really dark, which means <laughs> we need to watch out for mobs, more specifically grizzly bears. And so <laughs> we need a shelter since we weren't able to get this set up, so that's what I'm going to work on right now. We were going to stay here until we finished the house, no matter how long it took. This is level one, and you won't believe how crazy this structure gets by the end of it. On day two, I realized we would need a lot more trees than I initially thought. In Minecraft, one log creates four wooden planks, which typically makes things very easy and fast to build, because a whole tree only takes a few seconds to punch down, when you could convert it into four times as much wood. But as we were building in real life, we needed to use the whole trees themselves, which weren't very big, in order to build up these walls that you see here. And on top of that, we had to tie down each one individually, since otherwise it wouldn't be safe to actually sleep in here or keep away the bears. And this process process took absolutely forever, and I was kind of starting to wish that I was just playing the game instead, because in real life, this was way harder. We've been working all day on this, and the sun is just, uh, the sun's about to go down. It was really hot today, and so all of us are getting sunburned, getting heat stroke. We're still a couple more days away from finishing this, but we're exhausted. We'll see what we're able to get done tomorrow, and maybe do a couple things tonight. So while Jordan was processing the trees and I was building the wall, Paul started digging out the top layer of dirt in the shelter so we could start making a floor. Now in Minecraft, in order to make a floor, typically you'd make it out of wood planks or something nice. But we needed something practical that would be comfy to lie down on in our sleeping bags. So we cut down a pine tree and mixed the needles with some straw that Paul collected to try and make a softer bedding. And although it might seem like it would be prickly, when we put a tarp over top, it would be much softer than the ground, at least in theory. This is the level two for it. You won't believe what this looks like on day five. On day three, it was back to work. Today is day three, and we have a really big goal today. Finish doing everything that we started yesterday. We needed to get these walls done, but it was taking way more time and resources than we possibly could have expected. As the day went on, the walls were looking good, and we were starting to make good progress, but it wasn't moving fast enough. This is where you can see the main problem were the tools that we brought. The axe took forever to cut down the trees, and I started to appreciate how hard primitive building actually was. I was trying to cut down this tree, but I've swung at this thing probably a hundred times. And by this point, the sun was getting to us, but as it came to the evening, the temperature would drop significantly, which also wasn't a good thing because it got really, really cold. At the end of the day, we cooked some food and figured out the plan for tomorrow. I know that like it probably doesn't seem like we're doing that much, but we're doing like so much. Let me show you what we've done. We cut down all of this. I feel like the Lorax is about to jump out and get me but we'll make it we'll make it right I promise keep watching this is the level three fort level five is gonna be crazy tomorrow it should be done though so we put the tent inside just so that we have a place to sleep and we have the walls pretty much done so as you can see these walls are 
quite a bit taller than me so that the roof should come across and we should have quite a lot of space on the inside. These walls are also quite a bit taller than me, but they're not quite done yet. And we still need to finish these ones as well, but that should be finished in a couple hours in the morning. And by the end of day tomorrow, I'm hoping to have all the walls done and the roof on, so it should be completely usable. Then we'll have the final day to make it as luxurious as possible. Before we go to bed, we're doing some pre-sleep safety checks. If anyone needs weapons, I got a hatchet. I got two saws. I got the bear spray. I've got the knife. But we'll let you know if we die. It's gonna be WWE fighting ring, I'm telling you. Day four was more or less the same. However, now it was time to start building the door. We wanted something cool, but making a normal door with hinges when all we had was sticks and strings would be really hard, so here's what we did. We tied together a number of sticks to make a secure frame, then tied a bunch of twine around to make a net. This would get filled in later with pine needles. And while Paul and I were working on the wall, Jordan filed down some wooden hinges into the front of the house so the door would rest on, allowing it to hang and open. So last night, we're sleeping. I'm, I, I'm sleeping peacefully. It's one in the morning, and I hear ta And I look over, and Jordan's sitting straight up in the tent. He's like, I heard something. And he was like, I heard footsteps. I was kind of scared, honestly, because I don't want there to be footsteps outside the tent. But then I remembered that we have these walls, and honestly, what are we going to do if a bear comes? So I just went right back to sleep. But I know this guy was up for like several hours because <laughs> worrying about the bear. So it looks like, yeah, there's definitely room in there. Yeah. More? Woo! No way. <laughs> oh my goodness. We made wooden hinges. Wow. That's sick. Then we added a crossbar over the top, which would be the final support and allow us to finally add the roof. However, it was now getting dark. This is the level four house and we're almost done. We have all the walls, but we weren't gonna put the roof on just yet, just because we're gonna sleep in here tonight and we wanna make sure that it doesn't collapse. Tomorrow we're gonna add the roof and a whole bunch of other things. It's gonna look sick. On day five, it was time to finally add the roof. And by this point, we were feeling the sunburn and heat exhaustion. We're just getting ready to put the roof on. I will be honest though, up until this point, building this has been way harder than I thought. I kind of thought that by like day one, day two, we would have this, you know, done. Because in Minecraft, it looks so easy. You know, you have one day before the sun goes down in order to build yourself a shelter. And worst case scenario, you could dig a hole. But like, digging holes just to put those posts in have been unbelievably challenging in their own way. And the dirt here is super easy to work with too. It's just, this is much harder in real life than in Minecraft. We took some large logs to place over the top of the house with hundreds of pounds on top, all supported by that top bar. The worry now was everything would collapse, but we kept building. After that, we took all those spare branches we cut down from the trees and threw them up on top to rest on the logs and block out the sun. And as I started to see everything come together, I had a crazy realization. The three of us in the hot sun had been working all day for the past five days straight on this, but was it worth it? For it to be worth it, it would have to have some sort of meaning, right? But in Minecraft, there is no meaning. You just build what you want. But that made me question if there was actually a meaning to anything. The fort wouldn't last forever, and neither would we. And at the end of the trip, I realized the meaning came from the experience of it. Even though it was hard work and sometimes brutal, it was an experience that I otherwise wouldn't have had and may never have again. And that's how this little meaningless fort taught me to appreciate all my experiences before they're gone forever.